uh, what I'll be highlighting over the next 10, 12 minutes is, is what is the role of uh, minimal invasive surgery in, in cervical cancer and, and what's, the, uh, what's the current evidence. Uh, before I start, let us just salute the people who have contributed in terms of evoluting uh, cervical cancer surgery, right from Clark, uh, who did the first radical hysterectomy, Vardams, who modified the surgery in terms of resection of the parametrium and removal of the bulky nodes. Then there was Dr. Shota who, who invented the radical vaginal hysterectomy. Then there was Oka Bayashi who recommended the nerve sparing radical hysterectomy. <laughs> there is an Indi Indian contribution from Dr. Mitra who did a radical vaginal hysterectomy with extrapelvic lymphadenectomy. Then there is a radical trachelectomy, the lap radical hysterectomy, and the robotic radical hysterectomy. Now, if you go through the evolution of cervical cancer surgery, or for that matter, any surgery, it is essentially the lesser, the better. In cervix, we have moved on from radical hysterectomy to organ uh, preservation or radical trachelectomy whenever it's feasible and the patient is desirous of fertility. Or the other option is to reduce the morbidity of radical hysterectomy, either by doing, uh, using a minimal invasive surgery, the nerve sparing radical hysterectomy, which reduces the bladder dysfunction after uh, radical hysterectomy, and the sentinel node mapping that would you know, help the patient in terms of avoiding the lymphadenectomy uh, related morbidities. So as of today, we have four surgical approaches for doing a radical hysterectomy for cervical cancer, the conventional abdominal, the vaginal, which is, which is I, 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 I don't think a lot of people are, are doing a radical vaginal hysterectomy. Then there is a total laparoscopic radical hysterectomy, and with the advent of robot, there is a robotic assisted radical hysterectomy. Uh, I would be essentially uh, considering the role of minimal invasive surgery in cervical cancer, that is lap radical hysterectomy and, and the robotic radical hysterectomy. There are obvious advantages of uh, minimal invasive surgery in cervical cancer, which are for any other surgeries in terms of smaller incision, less pain, shorter hospital stay, faster recovery, less blood loss, less adhesions, fewer potential complications, and as of today, you know, there is an equivalent overall survival and recurrence rate, uh, you know, but it's all a non-randomized data. We do not have a, a phase one data in terms of level one evidence in terms of saying that for cervical cancer that, that uh, minimal invasive surgery is as good as, as the conventional one. Uh, but there are concerns for minimal invasive surgery in cervical cancer. First is the surgical endpoints. You know, are, are we getting adequate lymph nodes because these are the surrogate markers in terms of evaluating surgical adequacy. And the second most important thing in, in cervical cancers are the cut margins, the parametrial cut margins and the vaginal cut margins. Are we, are we doing adequately in terms of these two things with, with minimal invasive surgery? Then there is a concern of complications, intra-op, post-op. There are certain complications which are unique to minimal invasive surgery like, like port site metastasis. And last but not the least is, is the real concern about recurrence and, and the survival of, of these patients. So coming to the total lap radical hysterectomy, I think the early reports of laparoscopic radical hysterectomies came in 1990s by Canis and Nezart. And, and, and there were quite a few reports in late 90s and early 2000s which were essentially a single institution series. Now, uh, laparoscopy per se, particularly for radical hysterectomy, is, is a difficult surgery to perform. Not everybody who is a trained laparoscopic surgeon will be able to do a type 3 radical hysterectomy competently with acceptable level of complications. And that's why the survey of SGO in 2003 showed that uh, the laparoscopic radical hysterectomy was offered to only 11 percent by, by 11 percent of the responders, as against at that point of time it was offered to endometrial cancer for about 58 percent. And, and in 2008, this was reconducted and, and the percentage just went up, up to 38%. So obviously, there are concerns about doing a laparoscopic radical hysterectomy in terms of the technicality of the procedures and the complications that can happen. Uh, again, as I said, with lap radical hysterectomy, there is no randomized data comparing the outcomes with, with open radical hysterectomy. I just picked up you know, one study which, which almost included uh, 1,300 patients of uh, total laparoscopic radical hysterectomy. There is a large series from India as well by Dr. Puntambekar, and there are a couple of series which have over 200 cases. So I thought this was a sort of an overall review of, of, the, of the laparoscopic radical hysterectomy. The mean operating time was 202 minutes, which is, which is fairly acceptable. The blood loss was 156 ml. The node count was 21. A hospital stay, average hospital stay was six days. The conversion rate was 1.6%, which I found was much lesser than what was actually reported in the literature, which was anywhere between 10 to 
The recurrence rates were acceptable in 6%. There were about 6% intra-op complications and 6% and post-operative complications. Now, coming to the, to the robotic uh, radical hysterectomy, I think, as I said, there has been a limited use of laparoscopy for complex procedures for definitely, you know, because of the difficulties in terms of adapting to laparoscopy. Uh, what I believe robotic technology, the biggest advantage is that it would widen the use of minimal invasive surgery. I, I personally believe that it, it, is, it is something which is much easier to adopt than laparoscopy. There are a lot more people who will be using uh, the robotic uh, platform uh, to treat cervical cancers. Uh, in 2006, there was the first reported case of robotic radical hysterectomy. I think the three-dimensional vision and the endo-wrist instruments are very useful for complex dissections, particularly the terminal ureteric dissections. The result is, are the results, if uh, there, are, there are no comparisons between laparoscopy and open surgery or robotic and open, but is laparoscopy and robotic surgery results, are, are, are those results comparable? First, coming to the lab, uh, robotic radical hysterectomy, again, this is a review of about 275 cases across different series. Now, we have to understand that these series start from 2008 to 2011, where robotic surgery, uh, almost majority of the centers were still evolving. So I, I do not think we can consider it as a mature data. Probably in times to come, five years or 10 years down the line, probably we will have a more evolved data in terms of the adequacy and the complication profile with, with robotic radical hysterectomy. But, you know, the, the, the conversion rate, that is what, you know, surprised me and, and, and it's very encouraging that out of those 275 cases, there was only one uh, conversion that was reported with robotic radical hysterectomy and there were about 15 intra-op complications, which turns out about 3 to 4 percent. The, the median stay, positive margins, again, the recurrence rate and post-op complications, I think they were fairly in, in, in sync with what was available with the data at that point of time. The only thing, there was slight high rate of post-operative complications, and if you, if you review the, the paper, most of the complications were essentially the vaginal cuff-related complications, the vaginal cuff dehiscences and the vault hematomas, rather than any really uh, significant post-op complications. So now when you, when, when you put these two data together and compare the total laparoscopic radical hysterectomy with, with robotic radical hysterectomy, and this study I just took, it, it is basically 30, 35 cases in each arm, but they were done at a center, you know, it's a single center experience and it's an evolution for the center itself from open to laparoscopy uh, to robotic, it's, it's from MD Anderson, and, and I think, you know, there is a significant increased time that is required for minimal invasive surgery, be it laparoscopy or robotic, the blood loss, you know, the, the post-operative stay is, is less, you know, in, in, with uh, minimal invasive surgery. And the other thing that I found interesting in this is this is one of the rare papers which have objectively evaluated the adequacy of surgery in terms of the parametrial length because there are very few papers who actually mention the parametrial length on either side as well as the lymph node counts. And if you see, you know, I, I think it's a little crowded, but I think on all, all those fronts, the minimal invasive surgery, be it laparoscopy or robotic, was as good as, as, the, as the conventional open surgery. And the next thing, this is probably the most important thing, is, is to compare laparoscopic radical hysterectomy uh, with robotic radical hysterectomy for early cervical cancer. Now, this was a review with 27 studies, which included 342 uh, lapros uh, robotic radical hysterectomies and 914 laparoscopic uh, radical hysterectomies. I think uh, the, the groups matched in both the arms as far as the stage, the BMI, uh, the age of the patient, the history of prior abdominal surgery. Now, on all operative parameters, like, you know, the lymph nodes retrieved, you know, hospital stay, the blood transfusion rate was, was significantly more with laparoscopic hysterectomy, and probably the reason that thought there were a lot more vascular injuries in laparoscopic hysterectomies as against robotic hysterectomies. The intra-op complications were, were more or less similar. The post-operative complications were, were more with robotic radical hysterectomies. And, and when you see the complication profile, you know, if you see in terms of vascular injuries, ureteral injuries, and bladder injuries, they were far more with laparoscopic radical hysterectomies as against robotic. Now, actually, in, in terms of if you don't have a tactile feel, you expect the injuries to be more with robotic radical hysterectomy, but I think the excellent vision is, is uh, you know, compensates the lack of tactile feel. So this was one set of complications which was more with laparoscopic hysterectomies, with, but with robotic, the most common complication that was observed was vaginal dehiscences and vaginal cuff uh, pelvic abscesses. I think this was the initial phases, but this 
this is, uh, you know, this was a real concern with robotic gliding gliscectomy because you use majority of the times you use monopolar cauteries as against you use the harmonics, you know, for, for laparoscopic gliscectomy. So the post, the complication rates were similar, but the complication profile was, was totally different in terms of total laparoscopic gliscectomy versus, versus robotic. Now what we, what we actually require is a phase three trial comparing both laparoscopy and robotic versus the radical abdominal hysterectomy and currently a trial is on the way, you know, by uh, Professor Obermai and I think they have almost finished recruiting patients for this trial. We expect the results in about 2018 and, and initially they recruited about 100 patients, one is to one for laparoscopy or robotic versus open and then later on they plan to recruit another 640 patients. I think once the results of this trial are available, we can fairly certainly say that, that these two me methodologies of minimal invasive surgery are comparable and as good as, as conventional open surgery for treatment of cervical cancer. Also to conclude, I would say minimal invasive surgery is an alternative to conventional surgery for cervical cancer. It, it offers significant advantages in terms of blood loss, stay and complications. The data shows, albeit retrospective, shows equivalence in survival and recurrence rate. Robotic surgery is equivalent to laparoscopy in terms of delivering adequate surgery for cervical cancer. I, I believe it may widen the use of minimal invasive surgery for treatment of cervical cancer. So a lot of laparoscopic surgeons who are hesitant to do uh, a laparoscopic radical hysterectomy may move on to robotic one. The complications are equal, but the complication profile are, are slightly different. You have more vascular injuries and ureteric injuries with laparoscopy as against robotic. And what we, we need to wait and evaluate is, is the evidence, you know, that, that will come through a randomized control trial to be fairly certain and say that these two methodologies are equivalent in terms of recurrence and overall survival. Thank you.